37 hours ago. 37 hours ago, it was the end of the single life of Jake Wirt and Emily Ann Poole. But it was the beginning of their married life together. God knit them together, one man, one woman, one flesh, the end and the beginning. 20 days ago, the one flesh union of Mary and Richard Groggle was ended by death. God gave them 70 years together. Dick, 95 years of life. Yet on that day when Dick fell asleep in Christ, his life truly began. An everlasting life. One which he will see his wife again. As heart finds heart, and those sundered here on earth shall be gathered in heaven. Seventy-six days ago. That was the end of church services in this building. <laughs> the last day we gathered together. Longer than that, if you consider that the last time the church was kind of full of people was midweek Lenten service as we were singing together, preparing for the resurrection of our Lord. We were singing, Lamb of God, pure and holy, who on the cross didst suffer. That final stanza sung a cappella still gets me when I watch it. That was the end, and yet it was the beginning of a very difficult time for all of us. A time where we hungered and thirsted for a while for the body of Christ and also his blood, but also hungered and thirsted for this body of Christ. You and I gathered here together around our head. In these three months, we have experienced the lives of our homebound members. God willing, we've become compassionate to their plights. We know that there were reasons behind giving a stay-at-home order. We may or may not agree with the philosophy behind them. But we understood on a daily basis what it meant. They didn't always even now, some of them still wonder, why won't my pastors come and see me? Mark that. They not only need our prayers, they need our compassion and outreach. And now we are at another end, aren't we? Or is it just the beginning of an extended period of social distancing within this building? Awkward conversations as we relearn how to relate to one another. Mask wearing, hygiene conscious days. Well, we don't know for sure. But experts on this seem to indicate that that is the case, that we're in this for the long haul. But that's really the way of our lives, isn't it? Beginnings and endings wrapped together throughout. We see this in scripture. Isaiah is at his end as he stands before the almighty God and he confesses to it. He says, woe to me, I am lost, I am destroyed, for I am a man of unclean lips dwelling in the midst of a people of unclean lips. For my eyes have seen the king, the Lord God of Sabaoth. Isaiah should have met his end right there. He should have died, and yet he does not, for his cry is one of repentance, is one of confession. It's the death of the old Adam, and it's met with the new confession of the triune God, the thrice holy one, who has a messenger come to Isaiah bearing a burning which is touched to Isaiah's lips. 
And then these words are spoken. Behold, this has touched your lips. Your guilt is taken away. Your sin atoned for. A twofold action. For on the one hand, the guilt of Isaiah has been taken away from him. His conscience is cleared. He can stand before God with clean hands and a pure heart. For the Father has declared that the Son has taken away his guilt. But not only that. That same Son died upon the fiery altar of the cross to atone for Isaiah's sins. There's no longer any wrath towards Isaiah nor towards us. Isaiah can stand before God with confidence that he will not face the Father's wrath. And now he has his beginning. A beginning that is found in Christ's death and resurrection. Isaiah, the new man, stands before God in righteousness and purity. And the Father calls him into his God-given vocation. In this case, it's going forth to preach, to prophesy. And then one day Isaiah would meet his earthly end, which was only his true beginning. So also we hear in the Gospel of John an end of sorts for Nicodemus this morning. He has come to learn from Jesus the good teacher. That's what he appears to be to the eyes and to Nicodemus's ears. Yet when confronted by the truth, Nicodemus rebels. Nicodemus acts confused. Nicodemus acts like a 13-year-old boy questioning his parents. Jesus brings an end to the old Adam, the old Nicodemus. You must be born from on high. You must be born of water and the spirit but how can you be born a second time? Only by dying a first time. Down into the waters of holy baptism, you must be joined to Christ's death and resurrection. That's where William met his end this morning, but also his beginning. For there... Joined to Jesus' death and resurrection. Jesus, the one who was raised up upon the, the tree before all mankind. Jesus, the one who appeared to meet his end upon the cross. Jesus, the one who not only the world scorned, but the devil himself scorned, thinking that they had won. Well, Jesus shows forth the truth. That his death was only the beginning of a ministry of proclamation of the resurrection. Not just a proclamation of the resurrection, but a giving of the resurrection, a giving of death and life, a giving of the one who is the end and the beginning, the alpha and the omega, the beginning and the end of all things. How do things end for Nicodemus? The very end of the gospel, where is Nicodemus found? Taking Jesus' body from the cross with Joseph of Arimathea. And don't doubt that on the third day, Nicodemus heard that same proclamation. Jesus is risen from the dead. Nicodemus, there is your end. There is your beginning. Oh, the depths of the riches and the wisdom and the knowledge of God. How inscrutable his ways. So, dear ones, we come to today. Endings and beginnings wrapped up together. Beginning once again here with one another. 
receiving Christ's body and blood, looking forward to the day when we shall join Dick, when we shall join Christ. And there, things shall never end. There, we shall find ourselves as we were truly meant to be. There we shall rejoice with Christ in life eternally. Thanks be to God in Christ Jesus. Amen. The peace of God that passes all understanding. Keep your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus our Lord.